This is your Tech News Briefing for Tuesday, July 12th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Google's massive ad tech business has been the target of legal and antitrust investigations. For years, the Alphabet-owned company has controlled a significant portion of the online ad market, all along the chain. Now sources say Google has offered concessions in an attempt to head off a possible U.S. antitrust lawsuit. Last week, the Wall Street Journal exclusively reported the moves by Google, a sign of just how intense pressure on the tech giant has become. Joining us to discuss what Google is offering and what it could mean for antitrust concerns is our tech reporter, Sam Schechner. Hi, Sam. Thanks for coming on the show. Great to be here. So, Sam, you've been speaking with people familiar with Google's plans. What concessions is the company offering to make? Well, according to at least one offer that the company has made to the U.S. Department of Justice, the company would split parts of the business, its ad tech business, that auctions and places ads and websites and apps into a separate company that's owned by Umbrella. It wouldn't be an asset sale or a divestiture of those parts of that business, as some detractors have been asking for, but it would be a restructuring internally of how that business is operated. And what would that mean for how Google makes money off of ads? Well, that is a great question. And the honest answer is, we don't know until we see the details if this offer becomes something that actually goes into practice. We know that Google plays a central role in the business of brokering ads across the internet. You know, advertisers are slated to spend more than 600 billion on digital ads worldwide this year. And Google's business brokering those ads accounted for about 12% of its total revenue of $31 billion dollars or closer to 32 actually last year. So that's a huge business. So any changes they make to how that operates and any concessions they might make to, you know, give other companies a bigger share of that pie would be significant. Are US regulators likely to accept this offer? Well, what People familiar with the matter have told us is that antitrust officials in the U.S. have a preference for deep structural changes, things like asset sales or divestitures, rather than promises to change business practices, what are so-called behavioral remedies. So the fact that this wouldn't involve Google selling parts of its ad tech business, and in fact, Google told us they have no plans to sell or exit this business, might make it a tougher sell to the DOJ. That remains to be seen. You know, Google isn't only facing pressure, though, from U.S. regulators. They're facing pressure globally. Europe has raised concerns about its ad business. How are they receiving this news? And how is Google dealing with concerns over in Europe? Well, you're you're right that concerns about Google's role in advertising technology as a broker and auction house for digital ads has raised concern in many jurisdictions around the world. That's something that not only is the US looking at, but the EU is also investigating it, as is the UK. The EU opened its investigation last year, and you know they've talked about the concerns they have that Google might be preferencing its own business. And one of the big complaints that they've been looking into is that it's not possible to buy ads on YouTube, one of the world's biggest online video platforms, if not the biggest, unless you use Google's advertising tools. And so what people familiar with the matter have told us is that Google has actually made an offer there as well, in which it would allow competitors to broker the sales of ads directly on YouTube. And that could help address at least that part of the EU's investigation into Google's advertising technology business. Let's back up a bit, because you mentioned you know, just how large Google's ad business has become, but how did it get so big, and how have these concerns and the pressure on it been mounting over the last couple of years? Well, you know, it's actually a long story, and if you talk to Google detractors and some Google competitors, they'd say the original sin is that antitrust officials allowed Google to buy a company called DoubleClick. They made an agreement to do that back in 2007, and the deal closed the following year. And DoubleClick was a service that served ads 
to websites and used the data on those sites to serve those ads and also you know had an ad auctioning business and that helped give Google immense scale and and there've been a series of transactions like that that have helped the company build scale and so the idea is that if you want to buy an ad on the internet you know on an app or on a website you can use Google tools to buy that ad to place the buy if you're an ad buyer and then those tools might seek out the ad and make a bid on an auction platform that's owned by Google. And the bid requests, the ads that are being auctioned on that platform might be provided as well by a Google tool that's then built into the app or website. So they could control all of what's called the ad tech stack. Now, there are other companies that are involved in this kind of very complicated network of buying and selling ads within milliseconds across the internet. But the fact that Google owns every step of that process has led to complaints, complaints that Google rejects, but complaints that the company you know, has a conflict of interest or maybe self-dealing or taking too big a share of online advertising profits. I mean, given how involved, how intertwined it is in all of those layers, are these concessions likely to change things for competitors or for customers significantly? That is the question that antitrust enforcers are going to have to ask themselves as they prepare this lawsuit in the U.S. Are Google's offers and concessions on the table sufficient to address their concerns? And will it make a a difference to the advertising ecosystem? Or by contrast, do they think it's not sufficient and do they want to take their chances fighting what could be a protracted court battle with no guarantee that they'll actually prevail at the end? All right, that's our reporter, Sam Schechner. Thanks for breaking this down for us, Sam. My pleasure. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.